So welcome to Mechatronics again. Um, I will kind of introduce myself to start. I'm Dr. Rico Picconi. I am a professor in mechanical engineering, assistant professor. Um, it's my fifth year here. My fifth time teaching this course. Uh, I think it's a great course and I'm excited to be here. I'll probably talk a little bit about my research and whatnot throughout the semester, so I won't lead with that because it kind of gets boring like the first day, like, oh, introductions, and you don't remember anything. So I'll mix it in throughout the semester. Um, today, we're just going to go through and uh, sort of go through an outline of the course and discuss what it's about. So let's go through the syllabus. So. This course is uh, an introduction to electronics for most of you. So you've seen it a little bit in physics, probably. Uh, but we're going to get deeper into that. Um, and then we'll also uh, introduce electromechanical systems. Specifically, we'll talk a lot about motors in this class. So um, look forward to that discussion later on in the, in the term. I'm going to use a framework, a system dynamical framework that we'll introduce about week six or seven. And uh, I do that because it gives us a unified framework to discuss electronic systems and mechanical systems and electromechanical systems. So that's so why I do that. Um, these are my office hours and uh, office location. Please feel free to come by. Um, this class has two, two sections. Uh, a and B. Um, I don't care which one you come to. Textbooks. Get the Rowell and Wormley text. You don't have to get the other one. Um, but it is nice to have. Uh, and then I also make these homebrew texts here. So um, here's an example of that. So click on that. And uh, I break it down by lecture, but also there's one big PDF file. Uh, so there are two for this course, electronics text and then the dynamic systems text. They are essentially most of the notes that you'll need for the class. I'm going to go right through them, okay? I'm going to march through these notes uh, page by page, and I'm going to be writing on top of them. So it'll look like this, um, and I'll be writing on them. So I, pr I put them up there for you to print out beforehand so that you don't have to furiously take a bunch of notes. You can show up and then just write on top of that. I leave blank spaces for example problems uh, and whatnot. So to sort of fill in the blank important equations, that type of thing. I do that so that you can uh, mostly follow along and just like engage in the lecture and not have to worry about copying things down. Okay. Um, but I also leave some blank spots so that you have, you know, some engagement in writing it. So I really encourage you to buy into that method. So there are some people who are like, I'm going to just take my notes, um, you know, different way on the side. Uh, and that's fine um, in theory, but I, I, um, I'm going to get really, like, authoritarian on this this year because I, I think that the students I see succeed buy into the notes the way that I'm giving them out. Um, and so what I'm going to do is uh, uh, I'm going to institute a requirement that you bring those to class. Okay. So you have two options. Um, you can either print out the entirety of, I would do the, the electronics notes to start. It's like the first five, six weeks of the class. We'll be doing the electronics text. So this one here. So open that up. This is a PDF. And it's like, I don't know how big, 85 pages. So you can come in and print this off. Uh, and you're going to see. Um, like blanks in here and stuff. Well, that's where you'll be filling it in. So I think the best way to do it is to go to the copy center up on the, is it the fourth floor of Old Main? Third floor. 
uh, third floor, third floor of Old Main, and they will print out the whole packet for you, and they'll even um, like bind it for you in any way that you want. But I would say maybe like three ring uh, uh, <coughs> binder would be a good way to go, so that you can replace pages. So I am going to try to I revise these throughout the term. So if there's a major revision, and it's like a typo, then I'll just po point it out as we go through. Like, oh, this was a typo at the beginning, so you know, fix that in your notes. Uh, but if there's a major revision to a lecture, I'll let you know beforehand, and then you can print it out and replace that lecture. So the other way to do it is to print out the notes um, each each week. So I'll hopefully you know Sunday before the week starts, I'll send out like okay. You know, these are the lectures we'll go through this week. Um, please print out fresh copies if you um, haven't printed them out yet. Uh, uh, or, you know, I'll specifically point out this one was majorly revised. If you've already printed them all out, um, just print that one out. So, those are kind of the two options. <laughs> you can print on demand, so each lecture as we go saves a little bit of paper, but I do think that it's harder to remember to do that. Uh, so. I don't know, kind of your call, what, what way you want to go, but um, I am doing this though. So you are required to have a binder or equivalent, you know, some, something to keep them in, organized, um, with the electronics lectures, so 1.1 through 1.3, so those the first three lectures in that text, um, ready to show by Wednesday, by our second class. Um, to avoid a 10% deduction on your first quiz grade. Uh, or if you're going to do, so some people use like a, like a tablet, like Microsoft Surface or iPad Pro or whatever to write on the notes, which is totally fine too. Uh, just be ready to show me, like, here it is, I've got it all set up, I'm doing that. Um, and I do that, like, just to make you guys buy in, essentially. I'm just going to be authoritarian. You have to buy in. So I think that it's, I think it's for your own good, and I apologize for uh, uh, impinging on your freedoms uh, uh, more than I'd like to. I typically try to let you guys do your own thing, but in this case, I feel like it's, it's good to require it. Uh, and then throughout this, this term, if I feel like there's any, if I'm like, oh, I don't see a lot of those notes out, like what's going on, I'll, I'll do like a spot check, like, OK, I'm like, where's your binder, and uh, uh, where are your notes? Because the other thing I see sometimes is people print them off and they just stuff them in like folders, and then they just whoosh, get everywhere. And then they're looking. You can on every exam in the class, you can bring those with you. Okay, so you can bring the whole packet in with you. Uh, so the, st the students who don't buy in and they have them like shuffled around uh, loose everywhere, they're trying to take the exam and they're like it's papers everywhere and they can't find what they're looking for. So, so I really recommend organizing it well. Um, eventually I'll have like a course pack available up there but it's currently at this point you have to just go ask them to print it out. You send them the PDF. So yeah. essentially then you could basically be writing the exact steps to problems on the, on the test unwittingly and use them on, on a quiz. Uh, yeah, so I'm a I'm, uh, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do like example problems. They so the the quizzes. So we'll talk about weekly quizzes. The quizzes will be covering homework problems. Um, so like all the answers are like uh, just do the homework and then you should have all the answers. Is the idea. Uh, the the <coughs> exams. I don't. I don't tend to give like an exact problem from the notes on an exam, uh, but. Typically, we've done a problem like that, or you know, some similar ideas in throughout the, the course. Uh, so having that for reference is very helpful. Right. You, you'd have the process written down, but it'd be a different problem. Exactly, exactly. So it's really, uh, I think it's really helpful. So <laughs> just you know, trying to give you guys the best chance to succeed. And I and I will mention. Um, so uh, I guess to back up a little bit, that I sent out that primer. Uh, before this, and then I'll uh, get to your question. Um, I sent out this differential equations primer. Hopefully, everybody received that. Uh, so, if you were registered a month ago, approximately, I sent it out about a month ago. And then, if you were registered a week ago, 
I sent it out a week ago. Um, but in any case, if you don't, if you never got that, um, uh, let me know, and I will. Um, I should make that available on the course website. I'll, I'll do that. So the idea is that I put up a, a differential equations primer. So one of the prerequisites of this course is differential equations, and it's also been identified as one of the areas that people struggle with the most in this course. So I thought uh, differential equations is a big course, and sometimes it's been a couple years since you've seen it for some people, depending on how your prerequisite thing went and where you've been. So uh, I decided to present a sort of one unified approach to solving the types of differential equations we're going to solve in this class. And I distilled it down into, yeah, like a 26, 28-page uh, document, and then I recorded uh, lectures, I think it's five lectures on it. And there are, there are problems you can work out and there are answers. So far, I don't think I've uh, heard any feedback that there's an error in it in terms of what the answers are, but if you, there, if you find one, let me know. Um, so I developed that at the, in the summer and sent it out. So hopefully you guys have seen that and got yourselves primed up for that. Um, but if not, now would be a great time <laughs> to do that because um, like this week we don't have homework a lot of classes are still kind of getting going so you might have a little extra time to do the primer right now so something to think about doing uh, and I'll make it available on the website and we'll talk about how we'll communicate mostly as a class which is going to be through an app called slack uh, so I yeah it's 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 really nice so so I'll I'll try to send that out on slack too just to remind you guys that hey this is available so, um, good. Oh, and then one more thing. You know, so this notes thing. It's kind of a weird idiosyncratic thing about my classes, but um, I do think it helps students succeed. And there's a, uh, you know, this course is considered to be one of the hardest courses in the, you know, the junior year in the, in the, uh, uh, in the curriculum. So I, I, there are other courses that are like, Okay, you know, should get should get an A or whatever. This is the class that if you want to get an A, you got to really work at it. And I, I think that I mean, part of it is my own, like I'm maybe just an asshole. I don't know. But uh, I, like, I, I, I try to make it as easy as possible for people, but I also want you guys to learn a lot. So I'm giving you guys um, material that I think is really important for you to learn. But electronics, for a lot of MEs, a lot of mechanical engineers, it's it's not the easiest. Um, sometimes electronics kind of freaks people out a little bit. And, and frankly, it's, some of it's pretty complex. Uh, and how motors really work is, is actually pretty complex. So there's, there's a lot of really um, difficult material in this course. And so I, uh, I want you all to succeed. And, and a you know, new policy this year in the program, which was loosely held to before, but you have to get a C minus or better to move on. So could set you back. If you don't get a C minus or better, uh, uh, and several people got less than a C minus last year in this class. So I, I want you to succeed. I want you to do well in this class. You know, doing the primer, I think, should help you with that. I talked to the students last year about, you know, what was the most difficult thing? Um, and it was like, oh, well, differential equations right off the bat, just needing to be able to solve them. Um, I was rusty, and I got behind. So that's hopefully going to help you guys having that primer. So, yeah, but I also, I don't want to, so I, sometimes when you say, like, this is difficult, uh, it <laughs> creates, like, a mental block for people, <laughs> like, like, oh, no, like, I'm not going to be able to get this, but I really, I really feel like this material is uh, totally within our grasp, and I'm going to, part of why I, at about a little past a third of the way through this course, I switch over to a system dynamics perspective on this topic is that we can then draw analogies w between uh, or among electrical systems and mechanical systems and thermal systems and fluid systems and they they can be described with the same sorts of equations and then you see how they interconnect with each other in sort of similar ways and I think that we can um, use this sort of methodical, systematic process of 
approaching problems to uh, maybe reduce the complexity uh, of each step. So um, really breaking down the problem and methodically solving it, I think, is, is what allows us to do very complex things uh, without having to hold all of it in our minds at one time. So, yeah, I, I think it's, um, I think we're going to overcome that as a class. I think we'll be able to overcome the challenges. So, uh, another thing about my classes, and you may have already picked up on this, uh, I record the lectures. Um, oh yeah, sorry, what was your question? Dylan. Dylan, right? Yes. Yeah. Very simple question. How does yeah. the note-taking tablet work with using notes on the quiz? Oh yeah, that one's a little weird. Um, uh, the way that we've done it so far is if you take it on a tablet, um, then I still have you just print them out before you come to uh, the, the quizzes. Uh, or for the quizzes, you can, you can use the tablet, but for the exams in class, um, you just print them out before you come. I'm, uh, I would like to see one day be able to go to a completely, like, you know, everybody can have their own tablet and take notes and then take exams um, with their tablet there. Uh, unfortunately, with communication capabilities of all these tablets um, and the potential for academic dishonesty, which we'll also talk about, uh, I've, I've not allowed people to use them during exams. So I, 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 I want to, but I just, yeah. Maybe one day, maybe one day I'll have that system, but it's just not, not there yet. Sorry? Oh, the signal gym. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. That would mess with all other classes, especially one right below us. It's also illegal. There's that minor detail, too. I'm not going to admit this on YouTube that I would do that. Come on. Gonna, this is going to go off, and I'm going to get, like, convicted of some FCC violation. I, I, your face isn't on this, so they don't even know. I don't even know. I said you could. <laughs> so, okay. Um, all right. So we've got this, this uh, video lecture thing where I record the lectures like this. And I've got like this little, you know, little vi me video. And then we'll have the lecture uh, notes, the, the text, open there. And then I'll be you know, adding my own little things on the sidebar and then filling in the example problems and writing on it, okay? And so that's what the videos will look like. And so if you've gone through the primer, they look a lot like that, except for I'm usually not at home. At home. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, so that's the idea. There will be a... Um, there will be a uh, playlist. There actually is already a playlist um, available on YouTube, so you can just watch the playlist. You can subscribe. You can speed up the videos. So one of the things that my so my students have given me really positive feedback on this so far, which is like they like to go back and to study for exams or like to, when they're going to do the quiz, they go back and like I, there was something that was a little bit not clear to me, so I want to go back to that example that was done and see how it, it was worked through. That helps. If you have to miss a lecture, um, it's totally fine. You can just watch the video. They're usually up the same day. Um, I don't live stream them because it's, it's harder, so I don't. Um, and I also, uh, I you know, I think that if you, I don't know. I like to watch them fast because I speak slowly, so. Yeah, watch them in like 1.25 speed or something like that. It works pretty well. Okay, so that's the YouTube video thing. Um, and then I also put up la last year's video lectures. So this playlist is there. So there's 54 videos. And like, I, it's going to be a little different this year, but there are going to be some similarities. So, you know, potentially if you were like, oh, I really want to like, get ahead in this lecture or whatever, you can go to the last year's and see, you know, what the lecture looked like. So, for what it's worth. Okay. Slack. So, 
I get my email inbox flooded constantly, and I tend to uh, get buried at some point in the in the term. Like usually the first few weeks, I'm good. I'm like I'm on my email. I'm checking it. I'm responding to emails. It's great. And then like week eight, it gets a little sketch. So. Try not to email me um, uh, unless there's something like specific you really wanted to email me for. That's fine. To, it's fine to email me, but but expect that it might take a little longer to, for me to respond. I use uh, so that I don't. I, I want student communication to be like my number one priority, and not all this other stuff. So I split all of the student communication off onto a, a Slack or an, an app called Slack. Um, it's like. Any messenger service is a little bit like Facebook Messenger or Telegram or WhatsApp or a bunch of messaging services. But Slack is nice, uh, uh, especially for teams um, of people working on uh, technical stuff. Uh, it's a really nice app. So I uh, oh also it's used a lot in like like high tech corporate world. So like that's. Another cool thing about it is like, oh, this is whatever, cool and startup y or something. I don't know. But it's free, so you don't have to pay for it or anything. But you can um, get an account. Uh, if you sign up with your St. Martin's email address, then you'll be able to join my my uh, uh, Slack team, which is just called Dr. Rico. Oh, by the way, I, I don't. I don't mind if you call me Dr. Rico or if you call me Dr. Picconi or Professor Picconi or if you just call me uh, Professor or whatever, it's fine. Um, I do uh, uh, insist on the title though because I want to feel more important. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I, I encourage you all to get on Slack um, uh, as quickly as possible because that's where I'll be communicating with you. So I'm, I, I'll send out like a thing on Sunday saying, hey, you know, we're going to go through these three lectures and you know, this specific lecture I revised quite a bit. So you know, if you've already printed it, reprint that. Um, I will be announcing like, hey, okay, I, I moved the test. The test was going to be on Friday and now it's going to be on Monday. It's all going to go through Slack. Yeah, right, I know, it's already a popular thing to, to say. So, yeah, I, I'm going to be doing that through Slack. So if you aren't on there, you're going to miss very vital communication. So um, everybody needs to be on there. And if, if that doesn't happen, then, you know, I, I'll have to, like, put, like, grade pressure on it. But I don't want to. So <laughs> don't make me. Don't make me do it. I don't want to do that. So just get on there. And um, you can get, like, a mobile app for your phone. It also has like a desktop app, and you can also do it in your web browser. It's like all kinds of ways to, to use Slack. So pretty nice uh, uh, little service. Okay, resources. I don't uh, have a, a bunch of them for this term, but when I have uh, reason to, I'll point to these specifically during the class. Um, like some of the, there are some online um, resources that are kind of nice. So. That's for later in the, in the term. And then we'll talk about the schedule a little bit. Uh, it's tentative, but it's pretty set. I, I really expect us to be very, very close to this this term. Uh, we might deviate a little. Uh, the midterm placement, I think, is, is about right, but it might be bumped into like the next week, potentially. But it's probably going to be in week seven of this term. Um, there are 15 weeks. And then finals. So uh, the first midterm will be about week seven. Uh, you'll get midterm grades back, so you'll get an estimate of like what your current grade status is uh, the next week. So your first midterm will be um, in there. So you'll be having a. Um, so the idea, though, uh, broadly speaking, with our schedule, is that we're going to talk about electronics, sort of straight up electronics for the first. Uh, six weeks of the course. So, so these si first six weeks, and I have the reading from the Horowitz and Hill Art of Electronics textbook, which is the recommended textbook. Um, I, know, I happen to know that there are digital copies floating around. Um, it's a huge textbook. It's amazing. It's like the uh, they call it like the Bible of electronics or whatever. Uh, 
there's a th the third edition is the it, I recommend getting the new edition because the editions only come out like every 15 years or something. Uh, so the th third edition is worth getting uh, instead of an older one. Uh, and it's a great text, but it's I mean I know you guys are under a lot of textbook costs, so I don't require the text because um, we only use a very small fraction of it. So get it if you can. Um, otherwise, get with people to do the reading. Like it's pretty, um, it's really good reading. So one of the reasons why it's such a classic book is that the reading is great. Okay, so I definitely recommend reading it. Um, and then I'll be doing my lectures sort of side by side with that. Uh, so you're going to see the the Horowitz and Hill, the art of electronics approach is very. Uh, practical and very little emphasis on the mathematics of it. Uh, so you get a lot of intuition from reading that text. Okay, uh, My approach will be more mathematical. Um, I think they're both good ways. But I wanted you guys to see sort of both ways uh, uh, to kind of gain a little bit of an intuition and then also to, to use the fundamental uh, mathematical first principles as well. So, so we're going to go through kind of both ways. And uh, hopefully we'll kind of, in, in discussions and in lectures and in the homework, you're going to be able to synthesize those a little bit. So that's kind of the idea. Um, and, and we're going to learn really a lot of stuff in the first six weeks from electronics. So we're going to do the basic stuff, you know, uh, uh, resistor circuits and, um, you know, voltage sources and current sources and... Um, basic circuit analysis. We'll do that just right up front. Uh, 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 voltage dividers, all that stuff, right up front. And that's probably, we're going to immediately leave, you know, like probably by the end of this week, we're going to be in unfamiliar territory for you. So you're going to see some stuff from physics and be like, oh yeah, this is familiar. And you're like, wait, I've never seen this. Um, that's going to happen really quickly. Um, but there are going to be some familiar themes still, like Thevenin and Norton's theorems. Those should be familiar names to you, hopefully. Maybe not, but if they're not, it's okay. We'll, we'll be going through them. Uh, but we're going to go through them pretty quickly, and we'll, talk, we'll introduce more discrete elements like capacitors, inductors. They're nice elements. They work out mathematically nicely, and they give rise to differential equations that we're going to solve. Okay, So that, that's going to happen in the first couple weeks. That's why I'm like, yeah, yeah, they really get that differential equation stuff down because we're going to be into them pretty quickly. And then uh, I start to kind of build uh, up. So then we, we go to steady state circuit analysis where we're going to use phasers, which is like the term that everybody who takes an electronics course leaves a little bit freaked out of for some reason. Um, and I want to convince you that it's not so bad. Um, and then, then we're going to talk in the last two weeks of that sort of unit, so five and six, we're going to talk about some more complex components. So electronics has some very simple components that behave linearly, and we'll talk about what I mean by linearly. Um, and then it has these components that are very uh, nonlinear but are very useful. Uh, they're harder to do analysis with, but they do all kinds of cool stuff for us. So it's worth trying to at least get, do a first pass with some of these uh, elements. We're not necessarily going to be electronics designers, okay? And I'm not uh, expecting us to end this class as you know, being able to design circuits that can do all kinds of um, cool stuff like power amplification circuits and stuff. I got a basic one, you know, maybe, but not very, you know, uh, complex circuits like that. But being able to analyze them, that's what I want us to be able to do. So somebody gives you a circuit and says, this is the designed circuit, you know, that you're, you're going to use to drive your motor, say it's an, an amplifier. Um, it's going to drive your motor. You could analyze it. You might not have been able to come up with it to design it in the first place, but you would have been able to at least uh, you can at least look at it and say, okay, I know how this works. I know that this component's doing this, that component's doing that. I can come up with equations that govern its behavior. That's, that's sort of what we're going for um, in the electronics uh, realm. So um, as Emmys, 
you know, we're, we're learning mechatronics because we want to do stuff uh, uh, in a modern world that has a lot of electronics in it, right? So almost nothing is purely mechanical anymore. It's kind of like a fun little uh, 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 exercise to find purely mechanical things, like toilets. That's like, wow. <laughs> Still pretty much mechanical, but there aren't very many things like that anymore. Most things have some electronics in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, even further than that now, most things have computers in them. So that's like the next step. But we're not going to really talk a lot about the computer side in this class. I do teach a class that discusses that quite a bit called embedded computing. It's an elective that you can take later. So uh, yeah, but this is the sort of the foundation. Being able to uh, say, OK, we want a mechanic. And one thing is very mechanical engineer is to have motors that do stuff, right? But motors have a whole electronic side to them. So you have to be able to understand that electronic side in order to design with motors. Um, you have to understand the mechanical side and the electronic side. So that's where mechatronics is, is sort of coming in. And, and uh, I also wanted to say, in terms of like generally the importance of this course, um, mechatronics, people who are good at this are actually in very high demand right now in industry and everybody wants a part of this mechatronics game. So they have um, uh, there are some places that have like special like mechatronics tracks and stuff which we like virtually do, we just don't name it that. Um, but if you take especially my courses and then a couple other courses that are taught here, then you end up doing a mechatronics focus. Uh, there are people who are like lined up waiting to get into those sorts of programs out there. So they're in very high demand, and you're getting like the, the foundation of that in this course. So for what that's worth. Then we're going to switch gears from electronics proper to uh, a sort of system dynamics approach. So we're going to kind of take a step back and introduce system dynamics a bit, which there's a whole course on in the spring that this is a prerequisite for that goes much deeper into system dynamics. But we're going to uh, learn the, the basics of system dynamics, and then we're going to use that to take these electronics ideas that we learned and mash them up with mechanical system ideas. And uh, we can then describe systems in a single framework, so electromechanical systems in a single framework. We can, we can derive equations that are electronic uh, um, and mechanical equations that are coupled together that govern how um, electromechanical systems work. So that's our idea here. Uh, there's the second midterm I wanted to highlight. So week of Thanksgiving, which is we get Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off for Thanksgiving. Um, so the, the test will be Monday, and then so there's no like real class that week. So we just have a midterm. That's really all there is that week. Um, and then you can go on your merry way. So uh, I just wanted to highlight that in case somebody was thinking about taking off like all of Thanksgiving week. Um, there's supposed to be a midterm that week, so FYI, just like wanted to warn you now so that, you know, in, in a, a, a two months when you come to me and are like, hey, I was actually going to leave for Thanksgiving week, I'm going to be like, I told you the first day of class. So, okay. Uh, and then the last bit, we're going to really get into some fun, like electromechanical stuff with motors, and that'll be really cool. So, that's the plan. Broadly, all the assignments are up. The quizzes are up. Like it's gonna march through the schedule pretty much, just bang, bang, bang. Um, there are a couple weeks that don't have assignments due, which is nice, but also means that the assignment that's due the next week tends to be a little bigger. Okay, so your those weeks that we've got a little extra uh, uh, cushion, like this one, um, starting the homework the week before is a good idea. Uh, I always recommend starting the homework pretty early because it tends to take people a while uh, to do the homework. And that's a good thing. It helps you engage in the problem. Um, but if you're stuck, so I recommend everybody just trying the homework on their own first. It's good, good to try. 
Uh, but I highly encourage you to work in groups. So work in groups and help each other through this. You, you can't, and if you think like, oh, I always am able to go it alone uh, in a class. There are always a few people who think they can just go it alone. You can't. Uh, <laughs> I've seen a couple people ever make it through without working with people in class. So, like, it's really, really hard. So you gotta find people, get in groups, and yeah, and work together. And then um, make sure that by the end you understand all the homework. You don't turn it in, okay? So it's not, uh, so you're gonna do these homework assignments and like you can copy your friends, but like it's not helpful, you're not turning it in. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a quiz on it. So if you've done the homework and you understand it, the quizzes should be a breeze. It's essentially a spot check on certain ideas from the homework. Um, it's not always what is the answer to this problem. It's sometimes here's a uh, like here's one aspect of the problem uh, that if you did the whole problem you would have gotten along the way. So yeah. So then you use the homework on the quizzes. Yeah, yeah. So it's open book, open note, but just not open other people. Okay. <laughs> so you you just have to do the quizzes on your own. But, uh, uh, yeah, so you can use any resources <coughs> you want, and you can even use the internet for all I care, like you can Google or whatever. Um, but, the, I mean, the answers aren't out there, right? Like, it's not like the answers are on the internet. If there's like an idea that you're like, oh, I wanted to double check, or there's a word that you didn't recognize, it's fine, you can Google, I don't, I don't care. But just don't, I mean, the quizzes are there. They're only worth like 20% of your grade in the class. They're there to help you gauge if you're getting it or not. And they're there to keep you honest too, right? Like making sure you're doing the homework. So um, the homework, the first few, uh, well, the first one is just out of the Horowitz and Hill text. The third edition, so if you, you know, find somebody who's got it unless you get it, uh, it's due next week. So um, by next Friday, have it done. Um, then these assignments start to include also special problems that I ma I've made up. Um, so, uh, you know, work through those problems as well. Um, they tend to be a little bit longer and more challenging. Um, then at some point, you know, when we switch over to the system dynamics perspective, the homeworks will be from the Rowell and Wormley text, the system dynamics text, which is the Rowell and Wormley text. Um, there are some nice online notes from I think it's Raoul. Uh, they're professors at MIT, and they have run the system dynamic. They, they do system dynamics this way at MIT, the way that we're going to learn it. Um, that's, in my opinion, the best way. <laughs> There's also, uh, uh, this is the same thinking that's used, the same school of thought that's at UW as well. So I did my PhD at UW. And I TA'd these courses and I taught these courses up there. So I am very, um, I'm in that same school and they're from the MIT school, so it works out. So this is uh, all like MIT thinking stuff, which I think is, is cool. Um, I think it gives you some sense that this is like the, a, good, a good thing to learn. So MIT, of course, being pretty famous for being smart people, right? It's a pretty universally recognized school. So. Okay, homework and homework quizzes. So it'll be due on Fridays, uh, but you won't turn it in, but there will be a quiz, okay? Um, the quizzes will be on Moodle. They'll be available each Friday. So I post them in the afternoon, and then they're due that night. So I usually post them like 1 p.m., so if you wanted to just do them in the afternoon and then go out and party on Friday night, you're good. Uh, <laughs> otherwise... You know, you're gonna have a party doing your homework and and uh, taking the quiz. So it's usually due by midnight. So 11:59 is the last time I can put on there. Yeah. So you don't take the quizzes in class. Correct. Okay. So they'll just be at, on your own time at uh, at your uh, discretion. Um, yeah. So starting at like 1 p.m. typically, and then going till midnight. Oh, uh, when's the first quiz? Next week. Next Friday. Yeah. Good. Uh, and don't be late on your quizzes. Don't forget your quizzes. I will occasionally like reopen a quiz for you if you missed it, but you gotta come with a good excuse. And even if you have a good excuse, you only get one time of that. A one good excuse, I'm like, okay. Two good excuses, I'm like, okay, that's, no. 
too many. So, so do them um, and don't burn your good excuse because uh, you might need it later. So, uh, oh, you get three attempts on the quizzes also. Oh, Another nice. thing. So, but you 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 get your, the average grade. Uh, ah, <laughs> yeah, right. That was There's two steps to that. It's first yes, three, but then also you can't just guess. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, a good quiz grades tend to mean you're going to do well in the class, but I've seen people who have great quiz grades and then they end up not doing well in the class, and I kind of wonder if they're really doing the quizzes themselves. Yeah. Question. Moodle, what is that? Oh, yeah, Moodle. Good question. So uh, it's, there's a link on here. So I, I didn't highlight this, and I definitely should have. This is all on my website, which there's the URL, but ricopiconi.com will redirect you here, but I don't want to be a .com because... <laughs> so, yeah, so it's, it's just my name with a dot in the middle of the last name. Um, and then if you go to courses, then Mechatronics ME345 shows up. Well, I know you're in the front, so you might not be able to see that, but Mechatronics ME345. All my classes are on there. The last year is on there, too, so you can look at that if you want. But I took down all the solutions, so, you know. Bummer, huh? Uh, and then this is the syllabus and everything. So go to the website, see all of the, th the things. Um, okay, but I want to make sure that I get to this down here. Uh, so go to so Moodle. This you know, click this link here. Uh, it's Moodle.stmartin.edu. It's uh, like online course management stuff. So your grades will be posted on there. Your uh, quiz will be taken on there. Um, I don't do a lot of other stuff. There. I can, you can do forums on there and stuff, but I don't like this system very well. Actually, they improved it this year, so maybe it'll be better. Um, yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, good. Exam policies. So the midterm and final exams will be in class. If you require accommodations, please contact me. Uh, we have Disability Resource Center. I encourage you to use if you think you might have a disability for, you know, test anxiety or something. Calculators will be allowed on exams. Uh, only one's own notes and notes provided by an instructor will be allowed. So you can't bring in, like, like some textbook printed out. Um, the, the text will be closed, so only notes will be allowed on the exam. Also, you can't bring in, like, solutions manuals. That's not allowed. Can I um, handwrite a whole textbook? You can. If you want to handwrite it, you, you're good. Uh, final exam, be cumulative. There's the grading breakdown, pretty standard. Don't cheat is also pretty standard. So, so don't cheat. Uh, I'm pretty confident that we're, we're uh, clear on that point, yeah. So don't, don't, don't do that, and then we'll be good. So welcome to the class. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, make sure you guys bring your printed out uh, 